Black Shirts and Reds by Michael Perenni. Section. Women and Children Last. The overthrow of communism has brought a sharp increase in gender inequality. The new constitution adopted in Russia eliminates provisions that guaranteed women the right to paid maternity leave, job security during pregnancy, prenatal care, and affordable daycare centers. Footnote. Under Soviet law, women had been granted four months off with full pay for childbirth, and a year of partial pay if they elected to stay home with the child. In addition, they were allowed up to three years leave with a guarantee that their jobs would be held for them. End footnote. Without the former communist stipulation that women get at least one-third of the seats in any legislature, female political representation has dropped to as low as 5% in some countries. In all communist countries, about 90% of women had jobs in what was a full employment economy. Today, women compose over two-thirds of the unemployed. Those who do work are being channeled into low-pay, unskilled positions. Women are being driven from the professions in disproportionate numbers and are advised against getting professional training. More than 30% of unemployed females are skilled workers and professionals who previously earned higher salaries than the national norm. The loss of maternity benefits and child care services has created still greater obstacles to female employment. Throughout the Eastern European nations, the legal, financial, and psychological independence that women enjoyed under socialism has been undermined. Divorce, abortion, and birth control are more difficult to obtain. Released from the, quote, Soviet yoke, the autonomous region of Ingushetia decriminalized polygamy and made it legal for women to be sold into marriage. Instances of sexual harassment and violence against women have increased sharply. In Russia, the number of women murdered annually, primarily by husbands and boyfriends, skyrocketed from 5,300 to 15,000 in the first three years of the free market paradise. In 1994, an additional 57,000 women were seriously injured in such assaults. These official figures understate the level of violence. The Communist Party committees that used to intervene in cases of domestic abuse no longer exist. Women are also being recruited in unprecedented numbers for the booming sex industry that caters to foreign and domestic businessmen. Unable to find employment in the professions for which they originally were trained, many highly educated Russian and Eastern European women go abroad to work as prostitutes. Women are not the only ones being channeled into the sex market. As reported in Newsweek, 1996. Beginning of long quote. Prague and Budapest now rival Bangkok and Manila as hubs for the collection of children to serve visiting pedophiles. Last year, one investigator was stunned to find the stacks of child pornography in the reception rooms of Estonia's parliament and its social welfare department. Quote, Free love is regarded as one of the new freedoms which the market economy can offer, she wrote. Quote, Simultaneously, sex in the market economy has also become a profitable commodity. In some cases, quote, children are kidnapped and held like slaves, says Thomas Katow, a specialist with the Council of Europe. This is happening more and more. It is organized crime. End of long quote.
life conditions for children have deteriorated greatly throughout the ex-communist world. Free summer camps have been closed down. School lunches, once free or low-priced, are now too costly for many pupils. Hungry children constitute a serious school problem. Instead of attending classes, children can be found hawking drinks or begging in the streets. Juvenile crime is booming, along with juvenile prostitution, while funds for youth rehabilitation services dwindle. From the Los Angeles Times, 1994. End of section.